Millet, a resilient and unassuming grain, holds significant global importance in agriculture and nutrition. It thrives in challenging environments. It's the staple aiding hunger alleviation in areas facing food scarcity. Millet cultivation benefits small-scale farmers economically and promotes sustainable agriculture by reducing monoculture risks and enhancing soil health. Millet has diverse nutritional qualities. It is gluten-free and packed with essential nutrients like protein, fiber, vitamins and minerals. In northern Nigeria, the intersection of tradition and agriculture tells a tale of resilience and sustenance. Generations of farmers have cultivated millet, fostering a profound bond with the land. Millet farming here isn't merely a job. It's a way of life. It supports families, preserves culture, and instills hope for the future. Through the shifting seasons, these farmers cultivate not just millet, but also a sense of community and resilience that serves as inspiration for all. There is no better year to celebrate the International of Millet than this year. And also, this is one of the foremost projects in Nigeria that is promoting um, the adoption of the iron and zinc permalate. Currently, we're in the second year of the project. What we're trying to do is to enhance the, the economic uh, climate and um, nutrition resilience of smallholder farmers and consumers in Kano, Kaduna, Jigawa and Gombe states. I knew Parliament long ago with the Lecture Research Institute, but uh, that was just a name and it wasn't practice. But last year we had a commitment with the Harvest Plus project to produce some quantity of seeds for continuous production by the farmers. This millet variety is very important to us and also because of the high levels of iron and zinc they contain, we consider it as a game changer. Harvest Plus sponsored and supported the release of two uh, varieties of high iron millet crop varieties, that is Girani and Chakti. And those varieties possess some qualities that are preferred by farmers in Nigeria aside the high iron content. Some of these features include high yielding, they have high yield potential, they are also drought tolerant, uh, making them uh, the best varieties for drought prone areas, which we know are very prominent in the northeastern part of the country. The variety are also extra early maturing, which also tells us that in areas with limited amount of rainfalls, these varieties can actually come into play and are very, very suitable for those regions. And even for regions in the southwestern part of the country where the seasons, I mean, crops can be grown in two seasons, these var varieties can also come into play if well adapted to those ecologies. Aside that, again, those varieties also possess some other features like resistance and tolerance to most of the diseases that affect millet production especially in the southern and northern Guinea savanna of Nigeria. We're doing it to ensure that, yes, uh, the issue of malnutrition, it's so prevalent in the four states we're working, and we felt, okay, it's an opportunity, while enhancing the nutrition resilience of these farmers, also build their economic resilience. These are traditional crops. We discovered that most of these farmers and most of these um, consumers, they consume crop within their locality which they plant and felt, okay, they are more nutrient enriched crop that they are used to. These are not exotic crop, but these are crop that are locally bred here in the in country. And they are very suitable to the climatic conditions of these states where we're working on. So we believe they're promoting this crop and these farmers adopt, they can make more money, enhance their nutrition and also their resilience um, ability. They provided us with the seed, and two, they supported demonstration plots with all the production inputs, including labor. Three, they supported seed production with all the required for uh, breeder seeds to produce foundation seeds, and some farmers were given foundation seeds to produce certified seeds all by uh, Harvest Plus. As I'm talking to you, there are 117 
uh, seed plots, hectares of palm leaf seed production in Kano, Jigawa and Gombe states. Since um, these varieties are going to be the game changers here, we need to ensure that, yes, as quick as possible, we get them commercialized. We have private sector to invest in it, promote it, and market it. And we will support the private sector with all technical supports they require, with demand creation exercises, with extension activities to ensure that, yes, it gets to the farmers. Farmers are able to produce it and they also consume it and make some income out of it. We have currently in Jingawa invested over 230 million in terms of, you know, uh, input distribution to farmers for the purpose of seed multiplication. And we are hoping to harvest from this multiplication over uh, 150 metric tons of seeds which will definitely be made available to farmers as certified seeds uh, in the next few months. We had a training by Harvest Plus where we are introduced in producing millet with high plant density, almost 26,000 plants per hectare compared to the conventional system of producing only 7,000 stands per hectare. One. Two, the introduction of the variety which is early maturing which is drought tolerant, it also resists the drought. At the same time, it has very good quality yet. When you see it from your face, it is a marketable uh, color. We learn about judicious use of fertilizer, where only eight grams of NPK and the two grams of urea are used per stand of millet. But we introduced is uh, integrated soil fertility management, which normally the farmers don't care much about. This is a process where we add a lot of organic manure into the soil, then add it, add it up with chemical fertilizer. This was introduced by Harvest Plus, and it has reduced the use of the, and the quantity of chemical fertilizer, thus reducing the cost of production. Okay. And the local in the Mikino was a little Kunya Bima, but Musa Matakumiba. A man came here to cook again and a Hakamuamaka when a chimu Tazaro centimeter, co much a meter bears a kind of salad. I want the name of Yamusama and Panimia. He did the Miki. I want to look at the Mukas Aleke, Gakuma Tazara Lami, the Lami, the Miki Bari. A moment ago, she had the Zakagashi, Gayukosa, Kuma and Panazi Gabachi, a touch of it Normally farmers, when they produce conventionally, they get between 700 to 800 kilograms per hectare, or in 7.8 tons per hectare. But as I'm talking to you now, I have not harvested my farm, but a farmer, a colleague farmer, has harvested in just a quarter of a hectare, a 650 kilograms in a quarter of a hectare, making three, six and a half bucks in a quarter of a hectare. So you multiply it by four, you will see what he gets out of one hectare compared to what the farmers get, maximum of 800 kilograms, 0.8 kg tons per hectare. In the states where these varieties are predominantly produced, Jigawa, Kano, Kaduna, and Gombe, we're working closely with the government through its various ministries, the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Health. And today, uh, most of the policy documents in those states are being reviewed to include, you know, uh, the climate and nutrient smart agriculture. When we started discussion about the introduction of the pearl iron, the stakeholders in Jigawa are very happy because uh, we understand that this product or this uh, uh, crop will really help us in reducing the issue of uh, maintenance or uh, malnutrition in the Gawa state. When the Habit Plus come, we see it's a big opportunity to introduce the, the pearl iron millet and also other crops to our society. 
through the uh, our agri sector uh, agencies. We have the manpower and Harvest Plus have the resources and um, we have the farmers, the women farmers across the state. The collaboration is that um, Harvest Plus provide us with the biofortified seed. So we distributed the seed to the farmers and then um, we also trained them on GAP, that is the good agronomic practices. Women in general, they play a great role concerning this um, iron pell millet because they play almost three roles. The first one is they produce it. The second one is um, right from um, for service, everything for service, women does it in Jigawa State. So the women participate in that, being it the harvesting, the threshing, the cleaning, the packaging, the value addition, the storage, and then in the other hand, the production. Come on, turn the car engine down. I can't say it. Asa, if the car and chassis make a chassis, ata, the car will make a chassis. Aba, we put them, put Abu to make them bahu, double be make them bahu. If they make them bahu, but when we are Aba, we put them on the ham, 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 ham. Abu, the car, Maza, Ibi, we put them. If they is kayas, aya, come chassis, come chassis, aya, bar be chassis. We also have the private sector food processors that have also been integrated into the value chain to also um, you know, uptake the grains and also process it into products. We have uh, been in business for the past, uh, Halco Foods specifically have been in the business for the past two years. And uh, we are based in Kano. And we produce um, uh, instant cocoa, which is a millet pulp, millet-based product. We've been using uh, the uh, pearl millets, ordinary conventional pearl millets, and we were approached by Harvest Plus uh, and we were enlightened about the iron pearl millets specifically. And since it is higher in iron and zinc, it was a no-brainer that we would venture into the utilization and processing of uh, the iron pearl millets over the conventional millets. We're able to, to partner up with Harvest Plus and the farmers directly, which would guarantee us uh, um, the amount that we are looking to source for the whole year during the harvest season, as well as um, uh, benefits of training the farmers um, uh, to be able to uh, farm biofortified uh, iron pearl millets. One of our missions is targeting malnutrition. So um, by utilizing the biofortified iron pearl millets, it's going to help us immensely in eliminating the malnourished in the Northeast. Harvest Plus invited me to a training for the iron pearl millets and they helped me throw seeds, grow materials and the rest. This is the millet powder. We call it garunkunu. Majority of the families take this in the morning for their health and also provide more energy. Combined to the local millet oats, majority of them says they sleep a lot, this and that, but for the iron pearl millets, it gives them more energy. For the, because of the iron and zinc. This also is the iron pear millet's oats. Upcoming children take it with milk and also pregnant women take it too. It gives them more energy and provides more nutrients. Now the price of the bio fortified seed um, is not different from the conventional millets, seeds you find in the market. This is something we work with the seed companies to ensure that, yes, uh, it doesn't sell higher than um, other seeds because that will also discourage farmers from, um, you know, buying. So the seed costs as the same as other seed varieties in the system. We don't necessarily need to, to market it. When you compare it with the locally produced grains, you will automatically go for this one. It's automatic. But the way we convince them also additionally is we talk to them about the contents of minerals in the, in the millet, iron and zinc, which supports lactating mothers and uh, pregnant women. As I'm talking to you now, when you take one bag of conventional millet and two bags of chak tea, you take it to the market, the chak tea will finish before this one bag finishes of the local conventional. Iron pearl millet is not just another grain. It's a nutritional powerhouse. 
Packed with protein, dietary fiber, vitamins, and essential minerals, it offers a balanced diet in regions where malnutrition is a concern. Iron pearl millet's adaptability makes it a crucial component of climate smart agriculture, offering food security in an uncertain future. When you incorporate iron pearl millet into your diet, you're championing small scale farmers and promoting sustainable agriculture. It extends beyond your meal. It's about shaping the kind of world you desire. Be a part of the Iron Pearl Millet movement today.